What's up everyone, it's Ricky Lopez up in this joint. So I just want to go ahead and talk about how I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Whoa. Um, yeah, man. Um, you guys can't see it. I really need to do something about this. But the reason why I wanted to do it was for competition. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. So let's start from the beginning. So once upon a time, there was a little boy named Ricky Lopez or Ricardo Lopez. Um, he eventually turned to Ricky Lopez later on in the future, but for now, he is Ricardo. So, um, basically, you know, ever since I was young, I was obsessed, and when I mean obsessed, like, I mean obsessed with the Power Rangers. Like, I was going crazy with the four Power Rangers. Like, literally, like, every, all my drawings were like Power Rangers, Power Rangers, Power Rangers. I was obsessed with Power Rangers, and so I really wanted to do, like, the... I, oh my gosh, man, the way they would fight off the monsters was just phenomenal. It, I would literally, like, stare at them. I, I would literally stare on the screen and be like, like, wow, like, I want to do that. I was literally, at one point, I was like, well, dang, can I be a, well, can I be a Power Ranger? Like, how can I be a Power Ranger? Like, is there such thing as, uh, are there such thing as evil monsters somewhere that, um, can I be a Power Ranger? Like, I, what do I got to do? So yeah, Power Rangers really played a major impact in um, my childhood and in me getting to martial arts. So, you know, eventually I found out what karate was and I wanted to try it. But, you know, but uh, my parents were not financially stable. It wasn't until, I guess, I was like 13 when we had internet access or right, keep in mind, internet the internet wasn't wasn't as popping as it is today. Okay, back in my day, the internet was only for rich people. Now everybody has access to the internet. So these were different times back then. So I thought, <laughs> I thought to myself, well, what if I can teach myself karate from the <laughs> from YouTube? And so I tried it, and it was a disaster. Like it did not look as intense as it did in the Power Rangers. I don't know if you guys know what katas are, but they're basically like, <laughs> and I was just like, this doesn't seem fun. And so I was like, I started to watch more of the competitive or competitions for karate and they did not look fun. Everybody was literally padded up. So there was no blow or impact. Um, keep in mind, I did not know what MMA was. These Again, these were t different times. I had no idea what MMA was. The only thing they would show on the television was WWE, WWE Raw or wrestling, but that wasn't interesting because it was just straight up trash talking. Anyway, so back, so, you know, I was like, karate isn't for me. And then I was like, maybe Taekwondo. And then I was like, I was looking up uh, the competitions for taekw uh, Taekwondo. And th again, they were very padded and it just didn't look pretty good like the referee would stop them every time someone got a hit and I was just like this doesn't seem fun like I want full con like I know it sounds weird but I want to see full contact you know so then I came across this thing called judo and I was like the sport again the referee would stop them every five seconds and I was just like these martial arts aren't as intense as they are in Power Rangers like <laughs> like what the heck so then I came across um, this thing called Judo versus BJJ. And I was like, well, I know what Judo was, or I got an idea of what it was, but I didn't know what BJJ was. And keep in mind, this was all on YouTube. All this stuff that I was looking up was on YouTube. So whenever I looked it up, I was like, what is this? What is BJJ? And so I typed it in, and then, you know, this match came up. And it was greatest BJJ match ever by Boodoo videos and it was Marcus Almeida Bouchesha versus Vid uh, Rodolfo Vieira and I clicked it up oh my gosh every second I was on the edge of my seat literally I was on the edge of my seat I was like oh my gosh who was gonna win I don't know who's winning but they all look so intense like they were literally like rolling it out on each other like they were going at it and it was very intense and very hardcore and every minute was like I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Like, I don't know the point system, but they look like they're, like, it's full contact. 
and they look like they want to do something to each other but they're like hesitant so it's like they're trying to do stuff but it's like they're being cautious and i was like oh this sport sounds interesting so i was like so yeah i was like this is the sport that i want to do it's full contact you actually learn some stuff it looks it looks pretty intense and i want to do it i want to do this and so keep in mind i was 13 at the time and like I said, my parents were not financially stable. So I was like, you know what? There's two things that I want in life. And that is an art career. And that is to compete in this Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu sport. That's going to be my mission from now on. So from when I turned 13, because like, let's be honest, like I'm an artist as well. Um, I wanted to, at the time, I did not have any of the materials that I wanted to, to start my digital art career. Same thing with Jiu-Jitsu. I did not have, my parents did not, were not financially stable to do, for me, to put me in these Jiu-Jitsu classes. So I was like, well, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have to do this joint on my own then. So that's what I did. So when I was 13, every summer, ever since I was like 13, from when I was 13 to 17, I would literally like work in the fields on the summer, you know, picking blueberries, picking strawberries. Cause that's the only job I could get, yo. Like this, they, I don't know if you guys know this, but in America, they have this crazy law saying that minors cannot work. So it was hard for me to find a job. Literally, it was difficult for me to find a job. I could not find, I couldn't find Jack. And so I was, so the fields, was the only jobs that I could do, especially in the summertime. Those were the only things I could do. And, you know, doing a little landscaping here and there with my dad. But that was it, man. Like, there was not a lot of options for people for me because of my age. And so I was like, I cannot wait till I'm 21 or, excuse me, till I'm 18. And a lot of people were like, Ricky, you can't be growing up. You can't be wanting to grow up too soon. And I was like... Really, because right now I'm young and I can't do anything. I, I can't do any of the things that I want to. Like, you guys got to realize this. When I was, like, young as 13, I already had, like, an adult mindset. I already knew what I wanted out in life. The only thing that was keeping me away from getting it was my age, okay? So, I was just working. And so, by the time I turned 16, I was able to find a job at working at animal shelter, uh, an animal shelter, you know, of course, I was the Mexican kid, so I guess they made the Mexican kid, you know, pff, you know, scoop up all the poop, scoop up all the stuff, clean, you know, all the pee, all the throw up, because, you know, puppies throw up all the time, which is why I hate dogs to this day. Um, so, yeah, while all those other casual people were out there, you know, walking the dog and stuff, homeboy out here was out there scooping poop but that's a story for another time so the point is i had to do a lot of crazy jobs to get to where i'm at today and so once i turned 17 i was able to get a job glory hallelujah i was able to get an actual job and it was phenomenal and after that i was able to quit the dog quit working with those you know stupid dogs i was able to i didn't have to work in the fields anymore I was free, so I got this job, and so I gave myself another year to work. And so once I that's and so when 2017 came up, uh, no, 2016 came up. That was the year of my life. Like whenever October came up, I purchased my Mac, I purchased my cameras, I purchased my lights, I purchased my printer, I purchased everything, and. It was literally hard work, yo. Like, I literally turned 18, and I was saving so much money from when I was 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Six damn years, yo, of saving money, of not wanting to do anything because I wanted to save all my coins together. Literally, I did not spend my money on nothing. I saved every penny that I had to buy all this gear. And eventually, I was a, I had enough money to finance my own jujitsu career. So I was able to finance my art career, and now I'm able to finance my jujitsu career. So it was very hardcore. I took so yeah, the rest is history, yo. I started taking lessons, and I was eventually doing so financially successful because I'm like one of the best budgeters out there. Point blank, period. I know how to save money. 
I know how to get money. So I was able to save and eventually I was able to take privates. So yeah, man. So I was, so that's what got me into the sport was the basically, that's how I got into it. Yeah. And I enjoy every moment of it because it's very active. You're always learning something. Like you're always figuring out why certain techniques did not work. And so that's just what I like about it. There's, it's, it, once you start getting the ins and outs of it, you can pretty much create your own game plan and use it in competition. And I'll, 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 I mean, you know, it was just phenomenal. Like, I'm never going to stop. You know, I'm never going to stop. And that's a promise. Unless the only time I will stop is if maybe the apocalypse comes out or Yellowstone or a volcano erupts or we get nuked or there's like a World War Three. But other than that, you know, I'm going to keep training till you know, <laughs> keep on training forever. So, uh, yeah. So that's how I got into the sport. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.